In this video, we're going to look at, at uh, writing single expressions for piecewise defined functions. We'll work with this function given here. It's the function f of t, which has value 0 if t is less than 1. It has value t minus 1 squared if t is between 1 and 3, and then it has value 4 after that. What I'd like to do is take a moment and, and look at the second part of this, the t minus 1 squared first before we then go on and look at the graph of the whole thing. The blue here indicates the graph of y equals t squared and uh, t minus 1 quantity squared is the translation of this uh, one unit to the right which we'll show here in green. So the green here is y equals t minus 1 squared. But if we look at the definition of the function um, we only want to include that from um, 1 to 3. So let's see, let's get 3 on here. And let's just uh, use red for the portion of that function that we're going to want to use. So that's just this part right here. Now, if we put 3 into t minus 1 squared, we have 3 minus 1, which is 2, squared equals 4. So that tells us that the value over here on the vertical axis um, at this point is 4. All right, so the red part there is just the portion of t minus 1 squared between 1 and 3. Now, what we want to do is then after 3, the, our function has the value 4. You can see right at 3, the, um, the middle portion has value 4, so then the value 4 carries on after that, and the value of the function is 0 up until time 1, so we have a piece over here. So the red there indicates um, what the graph of our piecewise defined function looks like. So now let's take a look again at our step function, or I'm sorry, a piecewise defined function. Let's see if we can write a single equation defining that function. So um, you can see less than time one, the function value has just got, the function has value zero. So there's nothing going on until then. So let's take a look at, um, at switching the t minus one squared on at time one, which we could do like this. If we simply multiply t minus one squared times the unit step function that comes on at time one, then we're just turning that function on at time one. But the, um, thing we don't want here is we don't want that function to be on forever. We only want it to be on up until time 3. So we can fix that by just subtracting u sub 3 of t. So now what we've done is right here we've got a box function that turns on at time 1 and off at time 3. So that part of the function, um, or what that will do is just um, extract the t minus 1 squared over that time period. So now we need to get the function value 4 from time 3 on and that's easily done by just adding on 4 times u sub 3 of t. Okay, so what we're seeing here with f is if we look at this carefully um, we've got a part here, we've got our function t minus 1 squared uh, this part underlined in red causes that to turn on only from times 1 through 3. So that gives us this part of our piecewise defined function. Over here, this piece uh, simply turns on the value at of 4 at time 3 and leaves it on after that. So that gives us this portion of our function. So here we see how to use step functions to create a single equation um, defining our given um, piecewise defined function. Here we have a what we might call a ramp function. Uh, what we've got, if you look at the blue line, is something that you just think of it as a switch or, or a, a, a current or something that's turned off up until time 2 and from time 2 to 5 um, the function then increases up to the value 2 and after time 5 it just stays constant at the value 2 from there on. Um, so what we'd like to do is create a um, piecewise defined function for this guy. So let's take a look at what that might look like. If we look at the part of the function that um, this, the red arrow is directed at, that portion of the function has slope two-thirds. 
Now we could look at a line going through the origin with the same slope, which I've shown here in green. That line would have the equation y equals two-thirds t. Now our blue line, uh, the, the ramping portion of it, is actually just that function shifted to the right. So the equation for that would be would be y equals two-thirds t minus two, which I've put here in the blue box. So that's, that's the um, equation for that ramping portion of our graph. And of course the horizontal portion that's got height 2 is, is got value y equals 2. And so now in the same manner that we built uh, the function f previously, we can build this thing which we're going to call h. So h of t is simply 2 thirds t minus 2 turning on at 2 and turning off at 5. So that would be u of t minus 2 minus u of t minus 5. And then after that, um, we want to turn on the, the constant function 2. So we would just add plus 2 u of t minus 5. I'm getting a little close to the edge there. But that would be the way we could write um, this ramp function using unit step functions. Let me see if I can fix that last part up a little bit so it doesn't look so bad. Let's just move it down to the next line. So that'd be plus uh, 2 u of t minus 5. So there's the function h that would have the graph indicated by the blue uh, lines above. Now there will be times when we want to take a function like the one we just obtained and write its equation in a slightly different form. You can see right now that we have, um, if we were to get this together with this, we have a term that um, is multiplied by the step function u of t minus 2, or uh, yeah, u of t minus 2. But if we look at taking the same thing and multiplying it by the t minus 5, then we also have, then we have a piece here involving u of t minus 5 and over here we have another piece involving that. So what we'd like to do is is get h of t to eventually look like something times u of t minus 2 plus or minus another something times u of t minus 5. So that's the objective of what I'm about to do. So let's take a look at how we could do that. The first thing I'll do is uh, distribute that 2 thirds uh, t minus 2 into the two step functions. When I do that, I get what you see here. So we have the one part that has uh, the step function that turns on at time 2, and then we have these other two parts involving the step function that turns on at time 5. So what I'd like to do now is combine those second two terms. To do that we can factor the u of t minus 5 out of both terms. Um, so then we have u of t minus 5 multiplied by this function which will now simplify. I'm going to skip uh, most of the arithmetic there and show you what the final result is. It comes out to be what you see here. Now um, later we'll find that we need to do even a little bit more work on this part um, when we're ready to try doing the Laplace transform of this function.